This video demonstrates the procedure for priming the PLS ECMO circuit at the Alfred Hospital. Priming of an ECMO circuit must only be performed by clinicians who have training and experience in ECMO and who understand the potential consequences of an error during priming. Two primed PLS circuits are kept in the department at all times, both in the ECMO storage area. One is attached to a PLS console and is for eCPR and urgent circuit changes in the ICU. The other is in a box and is used for retrievals. Whenever one of these circuits is used, a new circuit must be primed as soon as possible. The principle of priming the circuit is to maintain cleanliness and minimise the possibility of air emboli. Therefore, the priming procedure is a sterile, meticulous, step-by-step -step procedure that involves at least two people, one sterile primer and one non-sterile helper. The equipment required for the procedure should be fetched from the ECMO storage area and taken to an empty bed space. You will need to fetch a large ECMO trolley, a PLS console, a CO2 canister, a large sterile drape, a sterile gloves, sterile gown, a mask and a cap, five three-way taps, a 20ml syringe, two one-litre bags of normal saline, a levels bag separate to the one contained in the PLS circuit box, and a PLS ECMO circuit. Inspect the box very carefully before opening to ensure that it is a PLS and not an HLS circuit. Clean the trolley with ViraClean and perform a surgical scrub. Then remove everything from the circuit box, laying out the circuit plus the three-way taps and 20ml syringe onto the sterile trolley. Hand the equipment that you will not need back to the assistant. Begin the priming procedure by cutting the two pre-pump access ports from the circuit and discarding them. This ensures that there are no access ports on the negative pressure side of the circuit. Next, you should cut the U-loop out of the circuit, leaving the venous and arterial limbs free. Next, attach the venous limb of the circuit to the pump head. This can be quite difficult. You should aim to have the end of the tubing cover the second marking on the connector. Now cut off the white polystyrene from the circuit, ensuring ease of manipulation later. Next, you should attach the five three-way taps to the circuit. Two of these are between the pump and the oxygenator for dialysis attachment. One is pre-oxygenator and one post-oxygenator for pressure measurement and one post-oxygenator for ABG measurement. Now you should remove the levels bag from its bag and attach the free venous and arterial ends of the circuit to it. The mnemonic Why So Blue is useful to help you remember that the venous limb attaches to the tubing from the levels bag that has the Y connection attached, with the arterial limb attached to the other tubing. Attach the 0.2 micron filter to one of the dialysis three-way taps between the pump and oxygenator and attach the sterile oxygen tubing to this. Then hand the other end of the tubing to the assistant who will connect it to the CO2 cylinder. Place a clamp between this three-way tap and the adjacent one and ensure that all three-way taps are closed and that there are no clamps on the circuit. Then turn the CO2 on to 1 to 2 litres per minute. The assistant will then clamp the fluid line on the levels bag and it should fill with CO2. Once this bag is full, the assistant should briefly unclamp the fluid line to prime it with CO2. The CO2 flow rate should then be reduced to 0 to 1 litres per minute. Now systematically work your way around the circuit, expelling CO2 from each of the three-way taps in order to prime the circuit with CO2 and purge any air from the circuit. Once you have purged all three-way taps, attach the CO2 connector to the adjacent three-way tap, remove the clamp and work your way around the circuit again in reverse order. Complete the CO2 prime by disconnecting the micron filter and passing it back to the assistant. Now hand the levels bag to the assistant after expelling most of the CO2 from it. The assistant will fill the bag with 1.5 litres of normal saline after ensuring that all ports to the bag are clamped other than the fluid line. Once the levels bag is full, the assistant will open the clamp on the fluid line and allow the saline to prime the circuit. Ensure that the yellow cap on the oxygenator priming port has been removed all three-way taps are closed and that there are no clamps on the circuit. Tilting the oxygenator so that the priming port is above the rest of the circuit will help remove bubbles. Other obvious large gas bubbles should be walked towards the priming port or back towards the levels bag.
Once all microscopic bubbles have been removed, the circuit should be attached to the console. The pump head should be placed into the pump, and the oxygenator should be placed into its holder. Now the assistant should switch on the console, press the clamp button and silence the alarms. The flow should be turned to zero and then gently increased to around 2000 RPM or until the fluid in the levels bag shows signs of gentle agitation. Both the primer and the assistant should carefully inspect the circuit to ensure there are no bubbles. The primer should then use the 20ml syringe to aspirate from each port on the three-way taps to ensure that all CO2 is removed from the circuit. To complete the prime, the yellow cap should be reapplied to the oxygenator. The cable ties applied to the connections between the circuit and the pump head and between the circuit and the levels bag. The levels bag attachments should be clamped and the console should be switched off. The circuit should be covered with a sterile drape and returned to the ECMO storage area after completing the priming paperwork.